This is a skyblock, a world where you spawn on an island in the middle of nowhere. On the island itself, there's an oak tree and a chest, but I survived on this island for 100 days. I built an entire village with villagers in it, made a collection of different trees, built a gold farm, and much more. And to find out how I managed to do all this from this one island, watch this video to the end. Day one, and I'm on a skyblock with almost nothing on it. But here's a barrel. Let's open it. And here's ice, a bucket of lava, and some seeds. I'll need the ice and lava to build a cobblestone generator. Before that, I need to get some wood. But I won't cut it all the way to the end because I need it for the leaves. And then I'll process the wood into planks and craft a crafting table. And now I can craft a wooden pickaxe. Now it's time to make a cobblestone generator. And I need a place for a farm where I can stand and farm cobble. And now I can start mining. After I got enough cobblestones, I made myself a stone pickaxe and continued to mine these cobblestones. After that, I improved my cobble generator and now two stones are mined here instead of one. But I'm not sure that my pickaxe will be able to mine so many blocks. They only get one cobblestone and I can't get any more. Well, I hope that someday I'll have a better pickaxe than the stone one so this generator will be more efficient. And after mining the cobblestones, I expanded my island. Well, I think now I can mine this tree to the end. From the leaves, I need to get oak saplings. In the evening, I planted my first sampling away from the cobble generator. By the way, I need to make torches out of this tree to keep the mobs from spawning here. I have a furnace and now I can melt the wood into charcoal. By the way, I've already put up the torches and expanded the island a little more. I need to expand this island because soon I'll have more saplings and I want to expand it properly. So I decided to expand this island and make it completely square. At the end of the first day, I made a tree farm. The next day, I continued to mine cobble, but my pickaxe broke pretty quickly. These are the last sticks I have. I mean, I have a pickaxe and I won't be able to do any more until this tree grows somehow and then I can get cobblestones and all I have left is the last wooden pickaxe which I'll use to farm cobblestones I've run out of pickaxes, so I'll have to wait until this tree grows. And while I'm waiting for this sapling to grow, I can expand this island. I've expanded one side, and now I need to expand the other three sides and then make a huge circle. By the way, I need some kind of save. I see there's no water from below, so I'd better dig up dirt here. Now, if something bad happens, I can just save myself from falling. I don't know how long this tree will grow. And now we can continue to make the outline of the future island. This is the island I have, and I'll make a circle around it. Okay, I've almost made this circle to the end, but I have a little problem. Since I don't understand how to connect it correctly, let's try something like this. It turned out to be some kind of crap. And this part of the circle is finished because I can't get it right there, so I think it'll go like this. Because I can't change anything anyway because I don't have a pickaxe yet. Here comes the yoke, and I can finally get it. And now I can quickly make a wooden pickaxe to get the cobblestone, because I wasted the last one. After that, I crafted stone tools and a hoe. I can plow the beds and plant seeds, let them grow, and I can eat an apple to restore my hunger. I managed to get three saplings from the leaves of this tree, which I immediately planted. After that, I used a pickaxe to reshape the crooked part of the circle. This is how it was probably supposed to be. I don't know what I changed with this circle, but now I have three more parts left. So the outline of the circle is ready, and now I can continue to mine the cobblestone. After that, I went to expand the circle. On the fourth day, another oak grew, which I cut. Only one sapling fell from this tree, which I immediately planted. And again, I mined cobblestones. In this survival, I'll do this for a very long time and very often. And by the way, I found a strange way to get an infinite source of water from only one water source. And to do that, I have to take this water source and I have to make a composter to get bone meal out of it. But I couldn't put anything in it because it didn't grow anything. Okay, so right now, I can't make an infinite water source. To get bone meal, I have to make some kind of mob farm and leave it somewhere on this side. And I'm out of resources. And if I go far enough away, a mob should spawn there. I need a skeleton, but I don't know how to kill it, because this skeleton can fall down in a few seconds, just like me. And I couldn't get any bones because this skeleton just fell down. I spent the whole night killing mobs to get some useful loot from them. And on the fifth day, I improved my mob farm. And now my survival in this world is starting to become a grind. And all I do is chop wood and mine cobblestones to at least have some building blocks. Wow, this is where I hide from the phantoms because I don't have a bed yet. And I spent the whole day mining cobblestones. And at night, I killed mobs until the phantoms came and killed me. On the sixth day, I tried again to make an infinite water source by waiting until the block of grass was in place where the water should be. I placed a block here, poured water, and used bone meal to grow seaweed. Wow, it worked. And now I've made an infinite water source out of that one water source. I didn't know you could do that in Minecraft. I can finally do many things that I couldn't do before because I only had one water source. And while I still don't have enough cobblestones for a farm island, I'm going to expand this little farm. 
At night, I again farmed mobs, made a bed and a fishing rod with resources I got, and finally went to bed. On the seventh day, I went fishing and continued to mine cobblestones for the mob farm. Then I began to build the mob farm. On the ninth day, I was still building this farm. On the morning of the tenth day, I was hit by a spider and fell into the void. Ah, oh, at least I have some things left. And I needed the pickaxe. Then I had to farm a lot of cobblestones. I finished this farm on the eleventh day. I have to wait for the mobs to spawn here and make at least one sword. The first mobs are already there. So I see a skeleton and a creeper here, and I'll farm mobs here all night. I forgot I was supposed to put torches there. I was wondering why the mobs weren't spawning and they were all there. Seriously. Ah, let's go to bed. Oh, there are spiders left and all the others have died. <laughs> I have a lot of food, and now I think we can find another island. I need about one and a half stacks of cobblestones. Let's start looking for other islands. I'll go there. And oh, I need an island, and it looks like a swamp. <laughs> ah, I'm a little short on blocks. I need to go get some more. And here's the swamp. By the way, there's a sugar cane growing here. I need to pick it up. There's also a sand biome. Let's go there as well. On this island, there are chests, a dripstone, and a cauldron. With these things, I'm going to make a portal to the nether, because with the 1.18 update, you can make a lava farm. And now I can go back to the main island and make a lava farm. I'll put a cauldron and a bucket of lava here, but I don't have a bucket after the last death. Okay, this system must be destroyed. And how do we make this farm? Well, for starters, let's build a platform under the island. And now if I put a dripping stone here, then I'll oh, cool lava drips and a cauldron underneath on the ground. And now I have to wait until the cauldron is completely filled with lava. Since I don't have a bucket to take the lava out of the cauldron, making a bucket is my number one goal. And I can only get iron from zombies that I kill with only a 1% chance, which means I have to kill about 300 zombies. But there are very few mobs spawning there. So in short, I need to get a lot of cobblestones and improve the mob farm because that's the only way to progress here at all. And by the end of the day, I was mining wood and cobblestones. On day 14, I saw a tropical island, but I don't have enough blocks to get there yet. I got my first bow while farming mobs, and I see a birch island. Wow. I have enough resources to build a tropical island, and there's also a huge tree. I climbed up the island and started to cut down the tree, but my axe broke. I returned to the main island and planted a sugarcane plant. In the evening, I expanded the tropical island to collect all the tropical tree seedlings and waited for the leaves to fall. On the 15th day, I built a mini island where I'll grow trees. I tried to grow a tropical tree to get four saplings, but I only had one sapling left, so I can't grow a big tropical tree. In the evening, I farmed mobs and got my first armor, only now that I noticed that the roof wasn't lighted. On the 16th day, I started to expand the mob farm and finished in the evening. As you can see, another level has been added to the farm, and now I hope to get at least one iron ingot. And a minute later, I got my first iron. I was very happy. It was only on the 17th day that I somehow managed to get iron out of this empty world. A few minutes later, I got a golden helmet. Zombie on the chicken. That's interesting. Let's try to get a chicken from this farm. I'll kill all the mobs, Karen. Carefully. Now I have to kill the zombie, and here I have a chicken. I brought a boat so it won't get away. Wow, there's another iron ingot. Finally, I made a cage for the chicken. Now sit here and enjoy your life. Here's the third ingot. I have three ingots. I can finally make a bucket. I take the lava, and now I have to put it all somewhere. So I made a platform under the island where I poured the lava. After that, I farmed another iron ingot on the mob farm. Now I also have golden boots. In general, the main goal at the moment is to make a portal to the nether, because there are zombie piglins that drop gold and normal piglins can trade a lot. But the cauldron fills up with lava every 10 to 20 minutes. And while I'm waiting, I'm cutting wood and farming mobs to do something, namely to upgrade the mob farm so there are more mobs to kill. During the night, I managed to get two more iron bars on the farm. The chicken was gone, and I guess it died. Next time, I'll make two meter fences for the chickens so they can't get out. From day 19 to day 20, I added two more levels to the mob farm. This is what the farm looks like now. As you can see, I didn't have a lot of resources to build it. I have an island there, but I forgot to record it, and there's nothing there anyway. I already have three lava sources, and I need a total of ten, so let it accumulate there. So let's go to other islands, loot them, and see what's there. I reached this island and there's an acacia tree and a pumpkin. Before I get it, I'll make a platform here. Then I cut down the tree and took the pumpkin. On the 22nd day, I made a new plant farm, but I didn't have enough dirt. While I was getting the dirt, water spilled onto the lava and I lost a chance to make the nether portal. Now I have to break the obsidian with a pickaxe, and it only took me two minutes. Since I didn't have enough dirt, I started looking for other islands and saw an island with a dark oak tree. I went there immediately. I need to cut down this tree and loot this small island. The next day, I finished this farm and planted potatoes. I farmed until the evening. I see an apple. I needed to cure the zombie villagers. I also need gold, which I can only get from piglins, and everything stops at the lava from which I can make a nether portal. On the 25th day, until the evening, I was cutting wood to increase the mob farm. Then I added two more levels to the mob farm. This time, I even remembered to put torches on the roof of the farm. By the way, this is what the island looks like. Well, I added another block of obsidian to the portal. Next day, I managed to place another block of obsidian, and now I only have five blocks of obsidian left. As you know, my island 
island is this big circle, and I decided to build each of the four parts of the circle with a different type of wood, and I started building the first side with dark oak. The next day, I added another block of obsidian and finished the dark oak part of the island. On day 29, I tore down the animal pen and used all the iron I had to craft a hopper, which I needed for the gold farm. Also on this day, I added another block of obsidian. I spent the whole night farming moss, and on the morning of the 30th day, I got a gold chest plate. I farmed so much on this farm that I managed to get to level 60. This is almost as much as you get for killing a dragon. I have one more block of obsidian and two pieces left. Then I mined the wood. I have one more block of obsidian. I think I have enough normal oak to build the second part of this island. Ha <laughs> ha! I can place it here and make another portal. Now I have to ignite it somehow. We take the planks and put them this way, that way, and pour lava here. And now somehow it has to catch fire one day. But in the meantime, I can go and farm acacia and hope that one day it'll catch fire. Well, what happened? It ignited. Yeah. My portal to the nether is ready, so let's go. You know, let me do this another way. Let's put the lava here somewhere, and the lava in its place and the stalactite underneath it should grow sometime. And now we'll find what awaits us in the nether. And I'm in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing here except the portal. So I need to build a zombie piglin farm. So I'll stop cutting acacia and start mining cobblestone. Stone. And to speed up the mining, I made an iron pickaxe out of all the iron I got. On day 33, I built the first part of the farm in Nether, and I need to get a bow and arrow, and I need to build a house because it's not safe here. The next day I added a looting system to the gold farm. If I understood everything correctly, the zombie piglins were supposed to run from the shot to the farm. Half of them just decided to kill themselves. Just a little bit of farming mobs and the chest already has a gold bar and lots of gold nuggets. It's super cool, but I need at least 18 ingots for two apples to heal two villagers, so I need to farm a lot more mobs. I tried automating the farm with a campfire, but it turns out that zombie piglins don't burn. And finally, I made a golden apple. I have the golden apple. Now I can heal the zombie villager. And for that, I need a witch and the zombie villager though. I need to go back to the mob farm and make two boats for the zombie villagers. And so began the long process of finding the zombie villagers and the witch on the mob farm. The next day I managed to get the first zombie villager. And see here? Well done. Now I have a zombie villager, and she needs a witch to heal him because she can throw a weakness potion at him that is needed to heal villagers. At night, I built another platform for the gold farm. I spent the entire 36th day farming mobs on the mob farm, but I was unable to find the witch and the zombie villager. On the 37th day, I farmed acacia. And the next day, I built a third part of the island with acacia. On the night of the 39th day, a witch finally spawned on the mob farm. Two of them. And now I have to get rid of the rest of the mobs. After that, I died several times from witches trying to cure the zombie villagers. After a few dozen attempts, I managed to give one of my zombie villagers a golden apple. And another zombie villager. That's it. Now let's wait for them to be healed. And in the meantime, I can get a lot of food. I already healed at least one zombie. And here's my healed zombie villager. Oh, and he gave me a sword. That's nice. I need to make a villager a Fletcher so I can trade sticks for emeralds. I need to build a fence for the villagers so they don't die like the chickens before. After I built the fence, I brought the villagers there by boat. And now I have personal villagers who will work for me making emeralds. But first, I have to give them a bed and get emeralds to buy more beds. The next day I gave them a loom, but they wanted my composter and my barrel. Seriously, I have to break the composter and the barrel for these two fools. Okay. Oh, he already picked a profession. And now I have to make another one of Fletcher, but I need gravel for flint. And to get gravel, I need piglins and gold. Everything here is so complicated. Then I went to kill the zombie piglins. I have 21 gold bars and I need to break those bridges somehow. I hope there's a piglin on the main platform. But before I get to the platform, I have to kill the zombie piglins. Okay, now let's trade with you. After trading with him, I managed to get 15 gravel, from which I got flint. The next day I turned another villager into a Fletcher. After that I cut wood and traded with the Fletcher. I also leveled another villager and immediately bought beds from him and placed them. It turned out that they don't eat fried potatoes. So the first thing I did was increase the size of their fence. I grew a lot of wheat and crafted it into bread. And on the 43rd day I fed the villagers with bread so that they would breed and give birth to new mini villagers. And love is finally here. Look how many beds. I built a whole row of beds for you to stay here. No, that's it. You'll be a toolsmith because I need tools. Day 43 and I only have gold pants and stone tools. Cool. I need two iron ingots and I have exactly, it looks like I have no iron ingots. I guess I'll have to get two ingots from this mob farm. And I have another mini villager. It's already the fifth child and I have a cat. <laughs> Our village is already growing, so I need iron. I finally got the second iron ingot and now I can craft the smithing table. Get a job. Hey, and you trade me a stone axe for emerald. To level up the toolsmith, I went to farm the trees. The next day, the villagers have a golem, so now I can farm iron from golems.
What? You want head? I leveled the toolsmith to level three. Well, and what are you selling? A diamond? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Well, at least I have an iron shovel with an efficiency of two. At least it's an improvement. The next day, the toolsmith offers me a diamond shovel and diamonds for emeralds. He's definitely making fun of me. I have cool stone tools and a diamond shovel. I feel like I'm the biggest Minecraft noob. Then he started selling me a diamond shovel, which I bought right away. I also made another toolsmith because the previous one didn't have an axe, which is a crucial tool for getting emeralds in general. Oh, finally, an axe. And with an efficiency of three, I buy it immediately. What a pleasure it is to cut trees with an axe. And after I leveled up the tool maker, he offered me a diamond axe in trade, which I bought right away. I'd like to share my progress on the growth of the dripstone. There's no progress. Now I'm making a grindstone and a blast furnace so the villagers can trade armor and weapons with me. I think the fence needs to be extended because there are already a lot of villagers there. So I'll get an acacia tree. And now I can place it. And I can buy some iron boots and pants right now. So I decided to level up the armorer first. On the 49th day, I upgraded my armor to the next level. And now he sells diamond pants and boots. By the way, the boots have some pretty cool enchantments. So I bought the boots and pants. And on the 50th day, I bought a helmet and a chest plate. And on day 50, I'm all diamond on this world where I started with an island, a tree, and a bucket of lava with water. But I still have to get a diamond sword. So I started to level up my weaponsmith. For the whole 50th day, I leveled up the weaponsmith to level 3. But he didn't offer me anything interesting. The next day, I started making another weaponsmith with a sword enchanted with looting. Golem, what are you doing? Are you giving the villagers a flower? <laughs> Seriously? You stupidly ignored him, huh, Golem? Looting one. Well, okay, let it be. In fact, I'm already tired of updating this weaponsmith's assortment. I'd rather use the anvil to make a higher level of looting later. Oh, Golem, your suffering will soon be over. I've upgraded the weaponsmith to the maximum level. And you sell me a diamond sword with the sharpness one? I've been leveling you for so many levels for sharpness one? Ah! Then I saw a bunch of cats in the villager's pen and decided to feed them fish. So I went fishing. I caught a puffer fish, which is the most useless fish. I'd rather throw it into the abyss. I caught the fish and fed it to the cats. On day 54, I made an anvil and immediately upgraded my axe. And so that I don't have to deal with improving enchantments through items, I need to make a librarian somehow. But first, I need a sword with a looting three and to complete the gold farm I have. After upgrading the sword to a looting two, I farmed cobblestone all night. And now I have enough cobblestones to build the third part of the gold farm. And finally, there are a million mobs in this farm. Now I can farm them with the looting on the sword to get enough gold to trade with the piglin. And at night, I bought a diamond sword. All my tools and armor are diamond. And from that moment on, I've already made a lot of progress on Skyblock. I think I can get a tropical tree now and build the last quarter of this island because I haven't done it at all. And then we can start building a village for the villagers and some kind of house for me personally. And in the middle, there will be a mention of the Skyblock. While cutting the tropical tree, I somehow managed to get four saplings. And now I'm growing a big tropical tree. It took me a whole day to build the fourth part of the island. The next day, I put a piglin in the boat and took it to a safe place away from the zombie piglin farms. And then I threw him gold to trade for leather. I got three leathers, which is enough for one book, but I need at least three, so let's keep trading. And how many leathers do you trade me? Twelve leathers? Uh, that should be enough. I've made a lectern to get the librarian. Oh, and here's a wandering trader. I'll buy some kelp and dirt from you. On the 58th day, I expanded the fence for the villagers so that all this acacia land is now theirs. Then I tore down the old fence. The next day, I gave the villager the profession of librarian and got a mending enchantment. And on day 60, I bought the mending enchantment. And I made another librarian with a looting enchantment. After that, I enchanted my diamond sword with looting three. And at the end of the day, I farmed wood. On the 61st day, I was cutting wood and trading with the villagers. The next day, I enchanted all my items for mending. On day 63, I decided to feed the villagers after starving them for 10 days. And for some reason, one of the villagers decided to share some bread with me. But my conscience did not allow me to accept this noble gift. And I threw the bread on the ground. The villagers were so happy that I fed them that they gave birth to two more mini villagers. The next day, my good-natured soul decided to give some carrots as well. So now I need to get some cobblestones and improve my cobblestone farm. So there's some boring golem killing in cobblestone farm. Farming. And in the evening, an improved super duper farm for three cobblestones at a time with a loot system was ready. With the help of this farm, I'll get enough cobblestones to build houses for this village. I say this as if I were running for mayor of this village. First I feed them, then I give them houses, but in my case, I really do it. Meanwhile, I have five mini villagers and they've already filled the beds. On the 65th day, I was farming cobblestones. I built a loot room and a portal room under the main island, so I need to get acacia. The next day, I started to build a house for the villagers, but I ran out of wood, which I quickly mined. And by night, I had built a dormitory for the villagers. I spent the 67th day upgrading my axe to 4th efficiency. And on the 69th day, I enchanted the axe with Fortune 3. And I did all this with the axe to buy bookshelves and get them with Fortune and level up the librarian to level 3 to be able to buy glass. Sometimes I choose the worst ways to achieve my goal. Great, now I can finish this house, but I don't have any resources. I've got the resources, I can keep building.
The first villager's house is ready. I moved them there immediately, but I still have some homeless villagers who also need a home, but I didn't have many acacia saplings, so I spent that day enchanting a hoe with fortune. In case you didn't know, fortune makes more saplings fall from the leaves. Interesting fact. The next day was spent gathering cobblestones and acacias in a very interesting and challenging way. I absolutely love this thing. On day 72, I tagged my piglin so he wouldn't disappear. Then I built a house for the villagers. The house is finished, but one of the villagers forgot something on the roof, so I decided to throw him off the roof. So we had a village for about 20 villagers, and they all voted for me. Now I am the mayor of this village, and I can build something else for them because I am the mayor of this village. I want to build another farm like this one, and I need dirt. Take the gold while he's trading with me, I can kill more zombies. You only gave me 10 gravel. That's no way to do business, dude. We need more gravel. 50 gravel, I see you're beginning to catch on. Then I waited until he traded all the gold. I processed the gravel from dirt to coarse dirt and then turned it into regular dirt with a shovel. Oh, and my efficiency is only two. On day 75, I got a librarian with efficiency. On day 76, I was so tired of trying to get an efficiency of three or four that I was willing to buy any book for efficiency. A few minutes later, I managed to get an efficiency of three. At the end of day 77, I enchanted my shovel with a four efficiency. And now I'm digging up dirt immediately. I'm not sure if it was worth spending almost four days trying to get the efficiency enchantment, but now I can mine dirt instantly. After that, I turned the gravel into dirt. The next day, I built a carrot farm and put up a fence. On day 79, I grew more carrots. I got gold from the mob farm and made a stack of golden carrots. I want to finally build a house for myself and not live in this square. To do that, I need to get some cobblestones and oak. But first, I got a lot of cobblestones. And then I got the oak. Well, the materials for the house are ready, but before I can build it, I need to find the blazes. And for that, I need to find the biome structure of the fortress and the nether where the blazes spawn. Let's Let's go over there and see what we can find. By the way, here's the Soul Sand Valley biome where skeletons can spawn, and that's it. So I connected to this island. I'll take the nether warts and I'm not interested in anything else here. Now let's go the other way and see what's there. I ran out of cobblestones. The next day I went to a cobblestone farm to mine for cobblestones, but I dulled and broke my top diamond pickaxe. I bought a new pickaxe the next day. I have to go there. There's a piglin with two crossbows. Really? A piglin with two crossbows? I'd better get away from him. And here I see the island. And here is the red biome. There are mushrooms and trees and vines, and that's all there is. Okay, I need some blazers. Is that a sky block? What? Is it like a nether sky block? And in the chest is a bucket of lava and ice. It's a really hell sky block. And I tried to make a cobblestone generator, but it didn't work. And it was obvious, but at least I tried. There's another side and another island in the nether. There's an island with a blue biome, and I got the achievement of discovering all the biomes of nether. Okay, here's the biome with the warped nether rack, the vine, and the tree. I had to keep building because there's a blaze structure next. I got the achievement for entering the fortress, and I ran out of cobblestones. And there I see this island with blazes. I took my cobblestones and came to the island with the blazes. I killed my first two blazes and built a safe area for the farm. And while I was at it, I now have 32 blazes. The next day, I started preparing for the battle with the dragon. First, I bought a power three bow from a Fletcher. After that, I crafted 16 Eye of Enders. Now I can throw them and find out where to go to find the portal in the end. Bingo! Somewhere over there. Okay, I have to go there. But that Eye of Ender went nowhere. It went away. After moving 600 blocks away from the main island, I ran out of blocks. On the morning of day 85, I saw the jungle pyramid I was going to, but I ran out of blocks again. I took the blocks and ran another 1,000 blocks. While building this structure, I was hit by a skeleton that suddenly appeared and threw me into the abyss. And I lost all my stuff. I have nothing again. At least I still have my iron axe. I spent the whole evening chopping wood. And on the 87th day, I restored stored my things. And on the 88th day, I got all my things back. Not as enchanted, of course, but I have them again. The next day, I decided to make a collection of all the trees I had on the dark oak part of the island. So I planted a dark oak, a regular oak, a tropical tree, a large tropical tree, a birch, a mangrove, and an acacia. This is the kind of collection I made. It's a collection of all the trees, and it's good. And by the way, I'm farming gold here, and I noticed that some of my zombie piglins somehow die by themselves. I wonder why. And I gave all the gold I mined to a piglin. After that, I made a path above the mob farm to Blaze Island. The next day, I broke the previous path because some mobs go along it instead of going from farm to farm. I went to the blaze farm. I finally have 13 eyes of ender. I can go back to search for the portal to the end. I won't go to the dungeon anymore. I'll just go to the place where the portal itself should be. Day 93 comes and I'm out of resources and I still don't know where the portal is. And another eye has fallen into the void. When am I going to find this damn portal? I have a million ways to nowhere.
Oh, I found it. But I'm out of cobblestones. But first, I killed a few Endermen to get enough Eyes of Ender. I'm fully prepared and ready to begin the battle with the dragon. At night, many mobs spawned at this place with a portal, which I killed, and went to the room with the portal. There are zero eyes here. It's good that I was fully prepared for this. After that, I destroyed the end crystals and the ender dragon itself. This time, I decided not to show much about how I killed it because it was a very easy battle. Now, this is the part where I want to make the plains biome. That is, grass blocks and oaks will grow here, and for that, I need dirt and a silk touch to collect the grass blocks. I tried to make a librarian to sell the silk touch, but I couldn't make them all day. After that, I made a path from my main island to the place where the grass block should be. I wanted the grass to grow while I traded with the villager and farmed the dirt. In the evening, I rebuilt that part of the farm and added another dirt path to the main island. The next day, I gave the piglin gold and waited for him to trade. On day 97, I rebuilt the coarse dirt and enchanted my diamond sword with mending. There's a lot of grass growing here. Let me help you. Let it grow and now I'll add more soil. I replaced all the soil with slabs, but I didn't have enough. Finally, after 99 days, the grass has almost grown to this part of the island. In the meantime, I can plant trees because I don't have enough time to finish this island. Yes, and now I can improve the farm with the piglin because he trades for a very long time and I have too much gold. To do this, I stopped the gold farm and threw the piglin into the boat and then took the piglin to his friend. Now I have two piglins and it should be twice as fast. It's already day 100 and I still have a lot of this island to change. And the grass here is only grown by one block. It's almost there. But now we're going to make this island as big as possible. And finally, one block of grass appeared in this part. But on the 100th day, I think I'll be able to build a house for myself. After that, I made a schematic of my house for the resources I had. And after spending the whole evening and night, I somehow managed to build it. Day 101. Officially, 100 days are over. I managed to build this house. I didn't even have time to build a roof for this house. As you can see, I still have a little unfinished part with an island where I'll have a biome of the plain. And as you can see, the grass has started to grow here. There's already quite a lot of grass, but I don't have time to build it all. I also managed to build a village for the villagers. I made a collection of all the trees. Only one azalea is missing. I want to thank you for watching.